What's up my beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. We're talking about all gadgets, all the stuff that I've used while running over the course of six years. But my name is Hella CDB, aka Hella Good. I've been running every day since May 15th, 2017. Did a Transcon LA to New York City. Did 200 mile races, but now we're here to talk about all the things that I've accumulated over the course of six years. And a disclaimer for you guys right now. You do not need any of these to run, to be a runner, to be a great runner, to be a avid runner, whatever you want to call it. But I like technology. I like the things that can help me enhance my running. I like seeing numbers and improvement in that. So all the stuff that I've picked throughout this run streak, I'm here to share with you all and show you some of my favorites. So let's get straight into it, baby. First, when you start running, the first thing that comes to your mind, I need a running watch. I don't even think I thought about shoes because I had a, a rush run. I'm like I have shoes that I can run in. But there's a watch that I need. So I had an Apple Series 2, I believe, at the time. And I just hit the running exercise icon and I started running. So I started with the Apple Watch. So you all know I'm the Apple Watch guy. I have Apple Watch. Like, see, this is a Series 5 in my hand, a Series 7. I have the Ultra over here and the Ultra 2 on my wrist right now. So I started with this. And it was really good for what it was at the time for me to record my run. And it had the ring closing, so I have like a run streak in within the Apple Watch activity so that was really cool to see and then as I got a little more I need more battery life because everybody know Apple is uh, known to have good battery lives I decided to get myself a Garmin when I was running across America so my first Garmin actually was the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro so this was like the legit running watch you know if you're not wearing Garmin what are you even doing right so I got this to help me to run across America I wish the battery was exceptionally great it did all the it wouldn't die on me. I wouldn't even have to charge it till every two days, which was awesome. And as we go along, you know, I got more into the watch review with you guys. We got the Coros. We got the Pace 2. We got the Apex. The first Apex, actually, that I have over here was pretty cool. And then we got the Apex 2 Pro. So, it, that got added to it. But while I was doing that, you know, we need heart rate monitor to see where your heart rate is, especially when I was training for Zone 2. So, I Googled and did my research, and the best thing that I could come up with based on my experience at that point and I still think it's one of the best if not the best out there is the um, the Garmin heart rate monitor pro over here so I got myself one of those and the drawback for this right now as I'm talking to you guys it stinks <laughs> let me know in the comments below no matter what I do y'all I've soaked this thing I've watched it. I don't know if it's the the material it smells so bad it makes me wanna like every time I'm like oh this is me it is my own sweat but like I do everything and then Chorus came out with their own you know, the one that goes on your wrist. You're like, you're like, oh shoot, look at this. I got the captain's band right there. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I don't have to worry about always pulling the Garmin one up because sometimes it does slide down based on your sweat or how tight it is. And then I love this. And then this started smelling so bad. Worse even than the Garmin, actually. At least with the Garmin one, I could cover my chest, you know, with a shirt. But it does really work well. I feel like it gives an accurate rating based on how I feel and the numbers I see on my post run with both of them. I think the numbers work really well. It depends on what you want to have, a chest one or the one that's on your wrist. So I got that. Why would you use a heart rate monitor? You know, everybody's talking about, ah, oh, my heart rate is off. I don't know what it is too high. But it's based off of wrist. Your wrist is not going to give you an accurate reading. There's going to be time off where like it doesn't collect the data and then when you your heart rate might be spiking up and then it collects it and, and that's all you see. Or when it's like kind of low, when you're really pushing it before it kind of catches on, it shows you a, heart, a, a low reading. So I think it's really important to have an actual chest piece that can give you the most accurate reading of your heart rate and the ones over here for corals, I think it works pretty well. And it will help you with depending on what your goal is in terms of training. When I was marathon training, this was very important, especially on the easy run. I did my easy run based on heart rate. My, uh, heart rate. So even though my easy run could vary with paces, sometimes it's in the 8s, sometimes it's in the high 7s, but sometimes I had to drop to the 8 minute mile pace because my body was so exhausted and depleted I felt like I was working a little more harder and I could see that based on my heart rate because I was just tired. So I would use the monitor to say, you know what, hella, the pace may have to drop to the nines because we got to keep that heart rate down. So depending on the training, I think heart rate monitors are very important. So you don't really need it. You can always go by feel. If you feel like you're breathing too heavy, you go slower. But if you like to see the number, these are the things to go with. And the cool thing about all of them, they all connect to Apple. It connects to Garmin. It connects to Coral. Even though this is a... a a Garmin brand, I can connect it to my Coros, okay? Even though this is a Coros brand, I was able to connect it to my Garmin and Apple Watches. So, 
it doesn't matter what watch you have. At least with those brands that I've talked about right now, you can collect, connect any of these heart rate monitors to them. Now on to headphones. I love wearing headphones. It's a topic that people talk about. And I've heard conversation on social media, you're not really a runner if you can't run without a headphone. I disagree with that because headphones sometimes is like your running friend that's with you. Because sometimes, as much as I love running, sometimes I'm just like, I need to stimulate my mind in a way, you know, I do use running to stimulate myself, my mind, to make me feel good, but I like to hear voices, I like to hear sound, I like to hear a music that can make me feel really good with the run that's happening, you know, sometimes when I hear an audible, a story that's being told to me, that keeps me, want to be out there longer running, I'm enjoying the running even more because someone is talking to me, my body is moving and I'm listening to a conversation. So I love headphones. We got the AirPods here, y'all. I, when I started running, I always use AirPods. And I've heard from a lot of runners that AirPods don't stay in their ear when they run. How does it stay in my ear when, when I run? How does it not fall out? For me, I don't know what it is. I've been maybe lucky with how my ear hole is, is made. But I've never had an issue with that. I've been currently running with the AirPod Pro. I really love this because um, it's smaller, it's lighter, and the sound is more clear. And it has the ability to do noise cancellation on and off. But I never really run with the noise cancellation on because I want to hear my surrounding, especially when I'm around traffic. So I use the AirPod, but I think my favorite headphones that I've used till this day when I started running, when the Power Beats Pro came out over here. I love these. These are my first one. I ran across the US with these. And the, the only sad part about this is like the battery, it doesn't always charge. Sometimes you got to wiggle it inside the cage, it doesn't charge. But I love these because it wraps around my ear so well and I can squeeze it tighter behind my earlobe. It's comfortable, I forget that it's there. So that's the headphone that I use. And also I've tried these Aftershocks. It's a love-hate relationship. Sometimes I love them because, see it's behind my, my ear, it's not in my ear hole, I can hear everything that's happening. But the sound quality is so bad. It feels muffled, it feels like there's no bass. Let me know if you all have experienced the same thing. I know they have new version coming out and things like that, but I've never really loved them, but there's days where I'm like, you know what, I feel like putting them on, even though um, they're not great, but I use AirPod most of the time. Safety, especially if you run ultra marathons. You need headlamps, you need headlamps that can not only last very long, if it can, even up to the whole 100 mile, or it has to be super bright, bright enough when you're in the middle of the mountain, it's pitch black, all you hear is heavy breathing and foot noise, and there's a cliff next to you. If you don't watch out, you can just drop in there and it could be deadly. So I remember um, people from Phoenix <laughs> reached out to me. They're like, we want to send you this headlights. And I was a little skeptical because I wanted to give them a PO box and they were telling me, no, we can't send it there. I'm like, why do they want my address? Are they legit? So I was nervous. But I finally figured it out and they sent it to me, to the PO box. And this thing is my favorite headlamp. It is heavy. It is really heavy. But the brightness, it has like high beam, low beam. It can project, it can lit up a whole room. I would be in a trail with a bunch of people that this is so bright, it will overtake their headlamp. That's how bright it is. It is on the heavier side, but the battery life is amazing. It lasts very long. And I think it could have lasted the whole 100 mile race that I've done, both Leadville and Western State. But the thing is though, the later it gets, it gets dimmer than I would like because you're so used to the brightness because it starts conserving the battery to last longer. So this is the Phoenix headlamp. That's the headlamp that I, I use for every ultra marathon and I got a backup this backup that I have over here it's called Petzl I think P-E-T-Z-L I did this because I saw a lot of ultra marathons especially the elites wearing this I'm like so it must be great let me get it I absolutely hated it it is so dim it's not as bright and the battery does not last nowhere near as the Phoenix but I had it as a backup just in case and that was for Leadville and then for Western State I ended up getting multiple Phoenix because I thought they were just better so headphone uh, headlamps are really important and it's something that you absolutely do need if you're doing an ultra marathon especially if you're going over 24 hours like us you know we don't we don't start in like a little bit of dark and finish when it's daylight we we go for two darkness so I think this is a necessity for sure to have on for safety reason because you want to make sure that you get out of that race safe and well especially if you're in the mountains because you can easily drop off the course last but not least we have this pod two from Coros and I've seen people wear these kind of pods they put on their waist on their shoes and they're running outside and I never really cared for it until I said to myself hey hella 
some of the runs you're gonna do for marathon prep if it's icy and dangerous outside yes you're gonna get outside to get your run shrinking because it has to be outside but if you want to do some of the workout on the treadmill to be safe which i did one time during my marathon prep um for boston when i was actually hurt i was actually very injured in the middle of the prep i didn't really talk to you guys about it but i did my 10 mile work on the treadmill after i did my warm out outside and cool down outside I put this pod on my shoes to be on a treadmill to get more accurate reading on my pace because treadmill pace is kind of weird to detect. When you use the indoor run on any watches, I don't care if you're Coros, Garmin, Apple, it does not read it accurate. And the treadmill is not giving you the right numbers because the belt is moving even if you're not on it, so it's kind of weird. So putting these pods on kind of helps you detect your cadence really well. That can match your speed and your pace. So I love this for that reason. So if I use this, it's because I'm jumping on a treadmill for a quick mile that's not my outdoor run but if it needs something needs to be done inside so I really love this and it's really light and when you put on your laces I forget that it's even there so this is like a, a little hidden gym that you have it's small it's not something that you need but when you really need it you're really happy that you have it because you get to see your numbers especially when you need to hit certain numbers for a marathon prep or a race prep and that's the pods um, from Coros. from wearing all the watches I uh, was talking about Coros, Garmin, Apple, Wahoo, to wearing headphones, heart rate monitor, to having uh, lights that's really important to keep you safe. Uh, these are the things that have helped me throughout my six year run streak. And something again, you don't need, some of them you really do for safety like headlamp, but it could be as basic as a simple watch and that's it and you put on your shoes and you get out there to run. So this is what this video is about, sharing with you the electronics that I've used throughout the year and there's other versions of it, but that's it. Thank you so much for coming and watching this video and stay tuned for more watch review videos that's just watch specific so you all know which is the best for your bucks because that's what I do. You can call me your four watch guy. I love you guys and thank you again Audible for sponsoring this video. I'll see you on the next one. Let's get it. Let's go baby.